Hello, my name is Matias Cavodi. I'd like to welcome guys to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the Captain America and Black Panther miniseries, Flags of Our Fathers, written by Reginald Hoodland. And we have art by Denise Co uh, Cohen, whom, at least in this miniseries, I really don't like the art. Like, there's a couple of really good pages. He does a really decent job. And other moments that it just looks really ugly. And I, I checked up this artist, and I... He had some pretty awesome work, so I don't know if he went for a stylistic change in this particular miniseries, or there's issue with the colorist or the anchor or something, because there's moments that it just looks really ugly and just terrible. And it sort of takes me out of the story. This is sort of a personal thing. So that aside, I want to tell you guys what I liked and what I didn't like outside of other than the art. Uh, from this miniseries and I'm gonna spoil the hell out of it and it's a pretty good read like if you're really into Black Panther or Captain America um, they build up certain things up to respective characters mythos and stuff like that so without further ado let's get into this we actually start off with Nick Fury and his Howl Howling Commandos uh, there's gonna be a special focus on Gabe Jones he's the only African American on the team World War II they're on a secret mission, and they cross paths with Captain America. And this this story actually puts a lot of emphasis between both of these characters. Obviously, both are heroes, but they carry themselves very differently. Um, Nick Fury actually sort of thinks that Captain America is sort of ridiculous with the whole costume and, and, and the shield and all that. And um, as we go on with this story both characters really respect each other uh there is going to be like growing friction between both of these guys and at the end of the story both of them don't really trust each other so we have hitler and company they found out about wakanda vibranium they want to take this country over they want to get their hands on this fantastic metal Baron Stroker and Red Skull are going to be sent to this company, uh, to, to this country, with a small army. Try to take over the small uh, country. Over American forces get wind of this whole situation and decide to send Nick Fury and the Howling Commandos and Captain America to Wakanda to try to find out what they're trying to get their hands on in Wakanda and stop these Nazi plans. And um, one really good thing is um, the focus on Gabe Jones and him dealing with racism from the United States and now being in the army, being with the Howling Commandos, uh, fighting for a country that doesn't really respect him and doesn't um, recognize all of his rights. And uh, there's a, actually a really good moment here where he's surprised that Captain America sits down to have lunch right next to him. So, like here... Hudlin does a really good job. Obviously, there's quite a bit of focus on racism in this particular story. Um, something that sort of caught me off guard, how over overtly racist the Nazis are. Obviously, they're going to be. But uh, normally, this is toned down in stories. But here, they're really, really racist. And it does add to the narrative. It does add to the story. It's not put there just because or for spectacle. So Captain America and company arrive to Wakanda to discover a group of Nazi soldiers all have been beheaded and killed and Captain America is confronted for the first time by Black Panther. This is Black Panther's grandfather whose name is, I don't remember, I think his name is Azuri. His grandfather is Azuri, T'Chaka is Black Panther's father. So Black Panther's granddad confronts Captain America he's like, hey, we already dealt with the Nazis, you can just turn around, <laughs> go back to your home, we don't want you here. We, ha we get a brief battle between Captain America and Black Panther, which is actually hinted in Regina Hudlin's uh, story at the beginning of his run on Black Panther. A couple of years prior to this, uh, we get, we're get we told that Captain America was defeated by Black Panther. Here we actually get a tie, so that's probably <laughs> editorial telling them to, like, no, you, they have to tie. Well, Cap and the Howling Commandos are invited to enter Wakanda as guests. Another really good like subtlety here is how 
Nick Fury is like sort of culturally insensitive. Like he's not a racist, but he's not really down with learning about new cultures and customs and stuff like that. It, it's not his thing. And while they're there, Nick Fury actually sends uh, Gabe Jones on a mission to enter the Wakandan mines and get a fragment of a vibranium, which this, this really conflicts Gabe Jones. Like he's not really happy with this mission. He's been, been given because especially as the story progresses, Gabe Jones is really welcomed into Wakandan society. He, decide, he sees how this society of black people thrives. Everything is like a, a black utopia and how things back in the States aren't okay. Once in a while, a group of Nazi soldiers attack, and we get this total... Like, Captain America and Black Panther are totally ruthless. Well, Cap, not so much. Like, But Black Panther is insanely ruthless against these Nazi soldiers. He's killing, dropping bodies left and right. We have the Dora Milaje, too. Having a little bit of fun. Back at the Nazi base, we have Baron Von Stroker. Red Skull. Masterman. This lady, who I don't remember her name is. And one of the messed up, most messed up villains ever... The armless tiger man he just really gives me the creeps like he grosses me out too moment that really kills me in the story where as i said before like the nazis are going to be overtly super racist and red skull tells us like we're going to align our uh, ally themselves with ape man or gorilla man white ape uh whatever his name is classic black panther villain Obviously, he's black, and they're openly racist in front of him. And, and the guy's sort of standing like, hey, I'm here. I can hear what you guys are telling, you're saying about me. So, obviously, at the end of the story, all the bad guys are going to attack Wakanda. Black Panther, Howling Commandos, Captain America are going to try to stop the Nazis from getting their hands on Vibranium. And um, one moment where Armless Tiger... Uh, man almost kills T'Chaka, Black Panther's father. He's saved by Gabe Jones. So Gabe Jones, um, T'Challa owes his existence to Gabe Jones, the dude from uh, the Howling Commandos. And obviously at the end of the story, Black Panther, Captain America, stopped the Nazis. They defeat the Red Skull and Baron Stroker. Uh, the weird thing is, like... Uh, uh, Black Panther's granddad is like killing everyone. He doesn't care, but he leaves Stroker and Black uh, and Red Skull alive for just send them back to Nazi Germany to say, give him a message. And it just sort of feels really weird because he's really brutal towards everyone else. Um, and why too? He could have just left one, but obviously he can't kill those characters off. Uh, another little nice detail in the story is that Captain Years in America uses a tribal Wakandan tribal shield that's round, and it's sort of hinted that that's why his shield from the triangular shape shield turns into the round shaped one. So this is a pretty good story. I do recommend, even though I spoiled the hell out of it, it's worth a while. The plot itself, it's pretty basic, but the dialogues and some of, some of the ideas that Reginald wants to convey on the reader, they do work. They're pretty good. I found them pretty enjoyable, especially Gabe Jones getting a little bit of a spotlight there. So hope you like this video. See you guys next time. Bye.